Good morning uh, from Barcelona. Good afternoon in Oakland. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so thank you very much for accepting uh, our invitation and uh, be ready to talk to us from there and uh, maybe certain point to join us here in New Zealand. And uh, uh, yes, it's a really great pleasure to have you here. Uh, and uh, especially because uh, uh, you are uh, such a representative of uh, a particular uh, say moment of architecture that is uh, uh, essentially the moment in which there's a reflection going on and there is a, a particular capacity to move into the space of architecture as a research. So I think that uh, what you have been doing is uh, particularly important and can inspire all of us uh, and particularly uh, our practitioners and uh, uh, students here in New Zealand. Uh, I'm Alfredo Alfredini, I'm the Director of School Architecture and member of the Urban Design Hub, who is the organizer of this uh, lecture series of this semester. Of the, of the School of Architecture and Planning of the, at the University of Auckland. Uh, this uh, lecture series, as uh, in the previous years, is made possible by our sponsor, Jib, who is uh, the New Zealand only manufacturer of largest market gypsum cluster boards and drywall systems. The talk of tonight uh, regards uh, EMBT, Benedetta uh, Tagliabu and Eric Viralles, uh, architects, a practice established by Benedetta in 1994 in partnership with the late uh, Eric Miralles. Together, they embarked on a creative journey that resulted in uh, numerous iconic projects uh, like the new Scottish Parliament building in Edinburgh, the Utrecht City Town Hall in the Netherlands, the headquarters of Gas Natural Penosa, and the rehabilitation of the market uh, neighborhood in Santa Catarina in Barcelona. They also designed their own residence uh, in the old city of Barcelona, which we might have the chance to have a glimpse uh, into it uh, today, thanks to, thanks to the fact that uh, uh, Benedetta is uh, located there and by show us around. Following the uh, untimely passing of Eric in, to, in, to, in, to, in the year 2000, Benedetta has taken the helm of uh, their practice as sole partner, leading uh, EMBT from uh, its headquarters in Barcelona. She has expanded its capacity by establishing uh, offices in various parts of the world, including Paris and Shanghai. The portfolio of the office is known for its diversity and includes large-scale educational complexes like the School of Management of Fudan University in Shanghai. Uh, and uh, they have also lent their expertise uh, to the creation of central, central urban public spaces, which is one of the things that uh, uh, that we touch upon today, like the Hafen City in Hamburg. And they have left their mark on transportation infrastructure through the design of uh, several metro stations, uh, particularly two in Paris uh, and Naples, uh, currently under construction. While contributing to the material improvement of, the, of our cities, Benedetta shares uh, her knowledge and experience through teaching and engagements uh, in uh, renowned institutions such as Harvard University, Columbia University, and uh, ETSA, UPSA in Barcelona, and hopefully a certain point also in Oakland. He, her lectures are at prestigious architecture forums and universities can uh, reach audiences worldwide, and she's honored to serve as a juror of esteemed international awards, including the prestigious uh, Prisca Prize. In recognition of her exceptional contribution, but it received a honorary doctorate, congratulations, from the Faculty of Arts for Social Sciences at Edinburgh, Napier University in 2004. Although the characteristic of that uh, office and the practice uh, is very articulated and diverse uh, uh, and very difficult to summarize, I don't know how to introduce it. I would just uh, uh, probably highlight one of the things that uh, strikes me in, uh, in their work. And uh, this is something that uh, probably I would summarize as uh, a tension between, uh, uh, well, retention and protection, I would say. So embedded ideas, values, practices, and materialities. So their architectures are experiments of activation of form of constant presence. So essentially memories, ideas, narratives, and inventions. So bringing together, if you want, the past and the future in the instant, in the particular moment of creativity. And that's something that, uh, of course, is very challenging because it opens up to indeterminacy, opens up to uh, 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 uncertainty and anxiety in the project. But that's what makes this project particularly relevant. Uh, and that's... Uh, uh, something that uh, is mixed between uh, you know being very rigorous and precise, and you can see in many of the details of the work that we see today, but at the same time, this uh, creative investigative dimension, experimental dimension that looks at uh, cultural expression techniques, uh, and uh, uh, as I said, that is a, a form of intensification of that particular instance, that particular moment that is transmitted to the works, uh, to the experience of the users uh, that usually are engaged into, into the production of the space uh, after it is completed. 
such intensification equally pervades the work of historical monuments and landscape and new buildings or objects, uh, such as the ones uh, that Benedetta we discussed today, including uh, the extraordinary home where she's located now, uh, the beautiful market in Santa Catarina, the Spanish pavilion, uh, the World Expo in Shanghai, and other things that uh, we should be surprised showing us. So, Benedetta, without further ado, please, the floor is yours. Good morning. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. And can you can you listen to me because I just changed to the yes to the headphones. So I know it's difficult to communicate from a distance, and uh, I know it's a uh, it's a uh, it's kind of uh, important to let only something pass by, and I'm at home. Uh, this is eight in the morning in Barcelona. And I know it's the afternoon in Oakland, so we, we already have a great time distance between us. And I think it's, a, it's very nice to uh, make you here with me as much as possible, because uh, the, the communication could be a little cold, but the fact that we are communicating is, is really the desire to have you as much as possible involved in in uh, in the world we 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 have here so i think okay, but, uh, maybe for just a second sorry for interrupting you uh, what i forgot to say in the introduction is that we have a question and answer time at the end of this of this presentation so please put a question into the box of the questions please sorry for that perfect <laughs> Upon this thing, yeah. so I, I i we are at home in, in my home uh, i have sarah uh, next to, to me, who helped me in preparing this, uh, this lecture of today. But I thought it would be nice to introduce you to my home, because I think the concept of home is very important. And a long time ago, with Rick Miralles in the 90s, when I came here in Barcelona, we were looking for a space to stay, and we found a very destroyed space. And uh, here we are with this uh, uh, space now. But when we found it, it was it was a storage. So I think it's kind of nice to go around and to start from looking a little bit at the home. I don't know what you see, but uh, this is uh, this is the home. Uh, Sam, I wish to to show you a little bit. <laughs> and uh, and the space was an abandoned space because. It was used as a, as a kind of a storage. And we said, this is fantastic because in the center of Barcelona, we can have a sort of loft. And uh, we started to, to imagine this old space used as a loft, let's say reused. But then the loft became more, more full of remains. And we started to work with the beams and with what was existing and with the walls, for example, and we realized how many people had been living in this house before us. So, for example, I don't know if the internet will work until here, but underneath some wallpaper, we found all these drawings, which were incredible because it, it was really like, uh, you know, like Pompeia, something was coming out. It's not totally precious, it's something which has the, the beauty of the past and also to tell us that some other people were here before us. And also in the, in the walls, we found these arches. This is Gothic, this is really something which is uh, uh, from uh, more than 800 years ago. So, <laughs> I don't know, I, I mean, 800 years in the in human civilization in Europe is kind of not so ancient, but it's kind of fantastic to find it very, very clearly as it is here. For example, uh, on the wall, we found this, uh, this angel. No, it's very much inside the wall, but it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an angel, which uh, maybe you can see here. I don't know if you can see. It's a it's a, a little sculpture inside the wall, and uh, and it's a it's really a kind of a remain which is uh, connecting all the, the the house with the old city 
with the inhabitants, with the history, which is really in, in layers here. So we can also give a little look to the, to the rest of the house, uh, a little a glimpse, not so much because also I have a guest sleeping here, but, uh, and also the, the internet maybe doesn't work so well. Uh, <laughs> But I think this is kind of important to give a little look to the house before starting the slides, because here we, we worked about, we learned about something which is really important to us, which is this idea of reuse or kind of uh, accepting uh, reality, accepting what you find. Uh, Eric Miralles, my late uh, husband and partner, he was saying, it's like an old dress and and we we put it outside down uh, outside up and and it's uh, it's becoming ours it's becoming ours but it's it, it has things that already had there i think this year for example in the biennale which was open only a few days ago this uh, this idea of margins this idea of uh, of uh, the the places where architecture is, uh, is not really thought are very important and reuse is one of them. Oh, this, uh, this uh, kind of saying, okay, we live inside a place where other people had been living, where other hands had been working and we accept it. And this is our action into architecture. This is important. And we have learned it here very much. So I'll show you only a little bit more hoping that the internet uh, still functions. Uh, here we have uh, the, the libraries. The library is like, uh, is like a labyrinth with uh, this uh, construction of a, of a library. Enrique was very, very proud about because it's the uh, most essential uh, bookshelves that you can ever see. It's only tubes. A lot of people have, uh, have copied it, but uh, but it's uh, so simple that it's nearly impossible to copy. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, some secret passages. And uh, also we have, let's see if internet works, we have a uh, kind of modernistic room, which is, uh, which is uh, the only room which from, uh, from the, uh, from the destruction of the storage, you know, this was used as a storage. So this modernistic room. We are really sorry, probably uh, Benedetta moved in a part of the house where there's no connection, no connectivity or poor connectivity. She will be back soon. Benedetta, you're back. Sorry, we missed you for a while. Uh, you're muted. Uh, okay, so I'm back. <laughs> that, that's it. This means the tour of the house is finished. Now we go to the slides. <laughs> uh, so uh, what I wanted to say is that, uh, uh, that this house is uh, the beginning for our thinking about reuse or living together with, uh, uh, with other generations. Also, I think I studied in Venice, which was very important for this idea of, uh, of uh, studying new generation, uh, old generations and, and live together with the old generations. So I think uh, now we can go to the slides which are explaining a little more about other projects which came after the, uh, the, this, uh, this discovery of the house. Uh, we have a problem with, uh, with connecting now because maybe we, we, we had this, con this connection. No, that's it, that's it. So I, I show you uh, our very last uh, small project. I think we are a, a studio, an architectural studio in Barcelona, who, and we do different type of projects, big ones and small ones. And I think the small ones are, are very useful. You know, this, for example, is only a pavilion for the fair in Milan. And, uh, and this pavilion is, uh, is kind of very fast built. They told us in, in January, and it was finished in, uh, in April. And, uh, and this is a very kind of very 
good sport, I think, no, for an architect. We design cities in China. We design big, big uh, projects which involve uh, the city, the neighborhood. Uh, but we love to do also these small things because it's the same concept. And I think it's really important to be able to have a kind of a, a possibility of uh, moving the different scales. This is a kind of a tradition in Spain and Italy. In Italy, uh, in the 50s, as, uh, the, the architects were saying, we designed from the city to the spoon. <laughs> so in a way, I like this very much. I think it's, a, it's something very entertaining. It's very beautiful to have a studio which is able to design a city and have the, the involvement in what you need in the city, but then also small things like for example, this pavilion, which is, of course, it's in the fair, it has to give a concept. And, and the concepts are very near to what you conceive for a city, for example. And in this case, it was about what is the uh, Mediterranean tradition of construction, where you find the sustainability, being together with uh, uh, nature and, uh, and being able to introduce nature into architecture, sustainable material like wood, other very cultural and sustainable materials like ceramic, and also explaining things into a kind of, a, uh, into a kind of a, like a, a, a little joke, let's say, you know, explaining with, uh, with happiness uh, this, uh, ceramics are writing things and what is writing you can read a little bit here is writing feel as if at home which was written in italian uh, sentirsi a casa and you read here in the benches where people can can uh, can can sit and can rest uh, from the visit of the of the fair you can read this word casa and I think this is now very central in our architecture. We try all the time to make architecture which makes you feel at home. And this is not a little thing. This is, a, this is very much. And I think now in architecture, we are at the point where we have to rediscover a lot of things of our profession. And I think this rediscovery goes through the discovery of small things. And these are small things which maybe before were kind of invisible. And one of the small things is the feeling of being at home in a place. So in a way, it's a fantastic thing to, to think, I, I can design this project which makes people feel as if they are at home. And I think this is the great, uh, greatest idea we have in mind in this moment. What you are looking at now is our studio and the foundation, Eric Miralles, as you know, Eric Miralles was a wonderful architect, was very special. He was, I think he was a genius. That's why I married him. But he was also a little crazy. And uh, that's why I, I also married him, because he was crazy. <laughs> and unluckily, he died very young. He was uh, 45 only. So uh, at the end, uh, we decided to create this foundation which is showing uh, his work, uh, our work that we are upstairs in the office, but also the work of other people who are very young and have a desire of making new experiments in architecture, new uh, ways. And, and, and this is a, really what we would like to, to the foundation to be about. Uh, I am now showing you what is above the foundation which is our office and our office is also a kind of a reuse in an old uh, uh, an old place in barcelona mm -hmm. so we are putting in this old place in barcelona in something that we create this pieces that uh, that we done during our career recently uh, dealing mainly with wood. We, wood is something that we like very much because it's a material which is really alive, is really sustainable. So we are 
investigating more and more on how to introduce wood in whatever we do. And uh, the main material, as you can see in this uh, video, is, uh, is, uh, is people, is life, you know? is uh, uh, the ideas of everybody, this uh, kind of uh, confusion, but also richness, which comes from the many minds, many hands uh, uh, who are proposing, who are doing, and uh, who are collaborating in uh, whatever result we have in the office. So the, the hand work is very, is very central because we believe that uh, in architecture you can express mainly by doing things. So let's go a little on. This is an image of Rick Miralles uh, when we won the Scottish Parliament. I thought it was nice to introduce him. Uh, we introduced his foundation and uh, many of the ideas that we are working with now are with, uh, with uh, his spirit. The house you have seen before, it's uh, not very changed from time ago. And uh, this is a little introduction. In spite of everybody, I was very attracted by these houses, which look so deteriorated from the outside, but with all these fantastic big spaces in the inside. I don't know if you can listen to the, to the music. I found a home where old memories are preserved and beautiful new stories are created. This is a publicity. <laughs> we have done this, uh, uh, this, uh, 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 this uh, video, this uh, you can find it on uh, Apple TV, and uh, it's in the series Home. So they proposed me to talk about this house. Uh, my children, one of them said, uh, "This is terrible. You're selling yourself to the commerce." And uh, and the other child, uh, the the girl, she said, uh, "Okay, you can do it. I will be next to you. I don't like it very much, but I, I never will look at it. But I I do it." And uh, this document is there, so you can look at it if you want. And uh, these are images of the house that you have just seen and when was inhabited by Rick Miralles and myself. And the house is a kind of a good way to start, first of all, to say how important it is to make architecture, which makes you feel like home, and also to show a project which was really next to our home, which is the market Santa Caterina. This was, I, I mean, from my home to this market is kind of two minutes walking. And this was uh, our, our market. It was a very old market. Rick showed it to me. Uh, and he was saying, this is the place where I was coming to buy with my grandma. I have very great reminds of it. And it was a very important piece. Then one day we heard that they wanted to destroy it. And, and this was really terrible. We started to protest. Rick wrote letters to politicians. And the politician said, well, you know, if you have better ideas, why don't you give the ideas? And we started like this. This was very nice. Barcelona, which was a still very, very like a little town, no? which, which was very helpful in a way. And so we started this conversation with the politicians and we ended up uh, designing the market, Santa Caterina, and also designing the neighborhood inside. And, uh, and we always say that we did that because we are very egoistic. We wanted a better neighborhood. We wanted a better market. We wanted a better place to stay. So also this is a, like making your neighborhood more home. And in this case, we have another video and the voice here, when it will appear, is very well known. I will tell you only at the end who, who is the man talking. But maybe you will, you will, uh, you will uh, uh, guess. Like half the kids his age, Alba doesn't have a steady job. Life is just that, rambling along aimlessly.
Santa Catarina is a market with a hidden treasure outside. Benedetta, we have a problem. You can only hear some fragments of the sound. Sorry. So it was not possible for you to listen to the voice Just of the man. Just bits and pieces. Just bits and pieces, unfortunately. It's a pity because I wanted to make a competition who won, who, who could guess the voice. But the voice was, I tell you, by Woody Allen. <laughs> That's why I'm very proud that someone decided to make a, a video with the voice of Woody Allen to explain the market in this very strange way. But I, I, I think it's nice, though, no? you make some architecture and then people can take them and interpret them. And this is also part of making it like a common uh, uh, knowledge and, uh, and home for everybody. So the situation on the Santa Catarina market was a very difficult uh, place, let's say very condensed, very, uh, very narrow streets. Here we have the, the photographs of the sky around the, the, the neighborhood. And when we started to work on the market, the idea was to open also the, the neighborhood and to make the market become more visible, more part of the welcoming towards this neighborhood. So we worked a lot with models. We worked also with politicians explaining a lot of what was happening. And one of the strategies of saying, we want this market to be more visible, to be the welcoming part was to make a, visible for the people, for the city, the, what was happening inside. And what was happening inside was beautiful, really. Going inside the market is uh, mixing with the food, with the uh, um, uh, perfumes, uh, with the capacities of the people to create uh, uh, different recipes, and with the survival of families, so I think there is so much around food and food in cities is now becoming a kind of a subject. And uh, I think it is so important. Now it's really becoming very clear that the chain of food is one of the, uh, many, of the main uh, uh, mechanisms which make the city go, go on. And we discovered this through the Mar Santa Catarina market. And it was a very beautiful discovery. So the Santa Catarina market at the time was a very gray place. This is a photograph of the moment when we started the competition. It was beautiful inside. You had all these colors and all this life. But outside was really a kind of a gray, um, deteriorated place. So when we started the work, we had to... Uh, conserve and to respect some of the parts that we thought it was very noble, like these walls. And, and also we make the excavation and we found a lot of archeology span because this place was a monastery before. So there was a lot of ruins of churches, but then on the top we had this, uh, this roof position, which was kind of explaining the beauty of the inside it was kind of welcoming towards a new doorway, towards the, the neighborhood of Santa Caterina, and air and light was entering again into the city, which was closed until that moment. So this 
uh, was, let's say, the way of uh, introducing life into the neighborhood. And uh, this uh, covering with ceramic, with colored ceramic, the roof of Santa Caterina, was really a way to make the city be more active in this place, to give back the life which was not there until the moment. So this, this was really a kind of a beautiful way to start in, uh, in, in action in our city. But meanwhile, we had other projects going on. And uh, we were, for example, designing the headquarter for a big company, which uh, was going back to the place where of origin, the gas um, company. And, uh, and we wanted this headquarter not to be an imposing headquarter, but to also have this kind of uh, home feeling so that even if it's a glass building, it's a kind of a broken glass building like uh, a fire. You know? This uh, is the gas company and we thought gas uh, is, a, is a kind of a flame. And a flame is bringing this idea of changing continuously. So this is a building which is kind of a, a fragmented volume. So whenever you look at it, it changes. It's very different. Meanwhile, we were also designing a park. And it's a big park in, uh, in a place which was an industrial park in, uh, in Barcelona. And now this industrial park was transforming into a place with a lot of water connected with the seaside and with the city. So that it's the first real connection between the city of Barcelona and, uh, and, the, and the sea. And this is going through a series of piazzas which uh, have water, which have a pavimentation and which are kind of buffers between the city and, uh, and the nature which is happening on, on the seaside. So this was a transformation which was a very strong urban transformation. Uh, the people were surprised that to the people who used uh, to live here in a very difficult neighborhood called La Nina, which is a kind of a, a, the old Bronx of New York. This was comparable to La Nina. And uh, they were very happy to be able to use these new facilities which were giving back this kind of relaxed way of life, a playful way of life, which I think is the first uh, movement towards having a, a healthy society. You know? Because if you find a way to, to, uh, to move uh, easily, this is a, a beautiful way to have a healthy society. So, uh, after all these experiences, we were called also by cities far away. We could win in uh, Hamburg. Maybe you recognize this uh, um, Elbe Philharmonie by Herzog de Meron. But the people who designed all the landscape is actually our studio. And this was a very, very long uh, uh, work that we started I think in 2001, it was the first competition that we won after Eric's departure, Eric Miralles' departure. And, uh, and it, is a, it is a kind of a, a public space work transforming what was the harbor of Hamburg, which was, I mean, it's one of the biggest in Europe, into a place for people. So it was a big work because it was really about uh, uh, inventing places which can attract people, which can, again, make people feel at home. And, uh, and this was at the beginning something that people in Germany were denying. You're saying, oh, well, you come from Barcelona and you think that here we have a beautiful weather like Barcelona, but this is very tough weather. You will not attract people. So uh, these images are images with a lot of people in the in the public spaces that we have designed. And this is really like, uh, to me, like being very proud, you know? I'm very proud that we could uh, have this result of uh, making the people feel at home here 
so much that they come to relax with uh, with families and friends uh, and uh, and this is a kind of uh, let's say transformation of the harbor and not only making it from boats to people but also making it from uh, from uh, a very tough german place to a kind of a more mediterranean public space <laughs> so i don't know if they would uh, accept that in hamburg but i think more or less is uh, is uh, is also something that they desired very much to have a little more of a mediterranean in their own lands and here in italy because you do something and then people call you because they say oh wow you did very well there please come and do something here and uh, this is a place in italy called rimini rimini is uh, is an historical city roman and leon battista alberti was uh, uh, working here and uh, fantastic uh, and Federico Fellini was born in in Rimini so a fantastic place but it is also the worst uh, seaside place of the world uh, let's say it's a massive massive beach with thousands of people and uh, it's so massive that now the city wants to make it more natural so they called us and say please make this street between the city and the seaside becoming a more natural place so here we transformed let's say this uh, this uh, very very tough uh, um, limit between the seaside which at the end is a natural place and the and the city into a renaturalized uh, park so now where there was a very tough street of, uh, of loading and unloading, they have uh, a park with, uh, with a lot of nature, with dunes, uh, trying to make a feeling, a feeling that it's not a massive seaside place. As you can see, you know, this, this are, each one of them is, a, is, a, is an umbrella for, uh, it's, a, it's a shadow for, uh, for the sun and there is thousands of people and then between the hotels which are also very massive and this massive seaside place there is now this park which is recreating a sort of nature and naturality and this also as uh, many uh, urban uh, urban projects is a project which is very much uh, long time you have to be very patient if you want to be an architect, uh, an urban planner, because you see results, but with very long time. Santa Caterina is still under construction, the neighborhood, which I didn't show, but it's a, it's a big change. And this started in 95. And uh, uh, Hafen City started in 2001, and we're still working on it. And this started in uh, 2018. And uh, so it's quite fast. And we started the first part of renaturalization of uh, one of the eight kilometers that we have to renaturalize. But I think it's uh, spectacular. Let's say uh, maybe I don't have images of the street before. But the change from uh, what was uh, the very hard limit and now this new natural buffer is, is really incredible. And here on this buffer, you have space for bicycles, for people walking, for uh, people crossing and going from the hotel to the, to the beach, uh, to the restaurants, uh, sports, of course, is absolutely important. And, and you're really in a kind of a natural environment. So this is, uh, this is uh, one of the last projects, Rimini. And uh, we, of course, have also the design of each detail because uh, it's eight kilometers. You have to give uh, identity. So each one of the, uh, of the different uh, phases have different colors, have tiles in... Uh, uh, different uh, designs, has thematics, has a slight, uh, 
you see this, uh, this is the thematic of the sea, but also there are other themes like uh, Fellini, for example, or like uh, the Roman uh, time. So you can have these little details explaining you where you are and the colors also giving you the difference from one place to the other. And uh, this possibility of, uh, of sitting and being uh, more relaxed. So let's, uh, let's go on. We have also some beautiful projects in, uh, in uh, Utrecht, in uh, the, the Scottish Parliament, of course. But it's so long, we, we cannot talk about everything. I usually put this photograph of the opening of the Scottish Parliament because I know Sean Connery was in the public. So this was great emotion to me. <laughs> and the queen, of course, <laughs> the, the old queen that now is, uh, is historic, you know? And uh, now we go traveling because this is also our life. It's a studio which started at home, let's say, but started little by little to bring this concept of home in other places in the world. And uh, the place which uh, I think it was kind of impossible to me, but it was really very, very attractive because I was there uh, in, uh, when I was 18, a long time ago, it was China. I did uh, a competition in, uh, in China, in Shanghai, in 2007, because I had this idea that I love China and I wanted to go back. And this was the competition for the Spain Pavilion in Expo Shanghai. And we proposed them to uh, make a, a pavilion made of wicker, handmade. And uh, they thought we were crazy, but they said, okay, well, let's try. And at the end, we could, uh, we could arrive to, to have this pavilion covered with more than 8,000 wicker panels, which were conceived in Spain, because Spain has a very strong tradition of the wicker craft, but it was then built in China because the language of uh, the craft of uh, wicker is exactly the same everywhere in the world. So in a way, I also understood that uh, craft and the handwork is uh, the same everywhere in the world. So humanity is united by handwork. And, uh, and this, we thought it, it's fantastic. No? It's a, really a way to make uh, humanity communicate. We were afraid, you know, we were in 2009, 2010, when we were preparing this pavilion, the relationship between China and Spain were not so strong. And we didn't even know if we would be able to let them understand how to build it. But then we realized that the work of hands, it was exactly the same here in Spain and there. And, uh, and this is a, a very beautiful other way of being always at home, proposing something which is handmade, proposing the world of, of a craft as a kind of a common language for humanity. And it was surprising. I was uh, very afraid. I, never in my life I had been designing something like that with uh, the involvement of, uh, of uh, people crafting each one of these uh, uh, wicker panels and uh, a, a building in wicker. So I was really afraid, the risk was very high, but at the end it had an incredible effect. Uh, everybody kind of loved it. And uh, this was uh, surprising to me. And this was the invitation for us to enter other competitions in China. And uh, for example, we were invited to design a university. Now I show you very quickly the images of, uh, that we created for this university. It was three urban block in a new part of Shanghai. And uh, we were proposing at the very beginning to have a lot of public space between these three urban blocks. And, uh, and uh, 
the public space going underneath, going inside. So the three urban blocks were kind of dividing themselves, creating spaces for everybody at different levels. And, uh, and this project was accepted. We won the competition unexpectedly. And now this is under construction. It was uh, under construction during COVID. So we had to look at photographs. But when you see here, this is three urban blocks connected at a, at a, a higher level, but also connected at street level so that the street is really taking advantage of this new construction of a new university and, uh, and also the, uh, the people using the universities are taking advantage of new public spaces on top of the streets, on top of the places, uh, so that this is a, a university where you can find space to meet public spaces on uh, inside and outside, uh, in private levels, in public levels, so that the connections is becoming the main part of the program. So now I'm, we are looking at this uh, uh, design being built in, uh, in China because we are like far away. We have been forced to be far away. And, uh, and we are really looking forward to see life entering in this uh, new university and, uh, and maybe becoming something special. So <laughs> I, I think we have many images here. We are now designing also in Shanghai, a new piazza, which will be uh, ready soon. And, uh, and this is also a piazza, which is kind of introducing more nature into the center of Shanghai. No, we were introducing this uh, idea of the sea, of, uh, of uh, the, the movement of water, which is not so far away from, uh, from the center of Shanghai, but which is very, uh, very invisible. And we were introducing also more nature. Uh, it's a place which will be used for a lot of shows, but it's inside of a new artificial nature, which is really embedding this new construction in, uh, in the center of Shanghai. So in a way also like uh, feeling at home for us is uh, introducing nature where everybody, all the humanity feels uh, uh, more comforted by and, uh, and making new centric places becoming re-naturalized, becoming more near to nature. So I don't know if I can, uh, this is under construction, which we still uh, receive, we have worked a lot on the, on the tiles, of course, and you can see that it's re very special, this uh, pavimentation, which is really recreating the movement of the sea, the colors of the sea, the colors of the sky into a flat, pavimentation. So um, I think now we can uh, maybe go faster and uh, I would bring you to, to newer projects. Uh, how much time do you think we have, Manfredo? Oh, you just go ahead. You just go ahead. Whenever. <laughs> so in theory, we were supposed to last for the, the talk was supposed to last for an hour, but uh, we are, would be a delight to see a bit more of your work. <laughs> no, not very much more. I think I would show you very quickly. We are doing a fantastic station in a place which in uh, in France near Paris, which was a ghetto. So I show you these images of 2005 when this place was burned, destroyed. People hated it and uh, people were destroying their own homes, their own cars. And, uh, and artists like GR was reacting to this saying, of course, this is a place where people don't have a face. Nobody's looking at them. So he was making gigantic photos of this anonymous people and he was putting them gigantic in the cities of Paris or in the destroyed buildings in, in the place. So here we are designing a station 
and a station which would like to look a little like uh, this market, colorful, full of different voices, full of very ethnical work, and uh, the station will be like that. So we are involved in this, mm -hmm. uh, in this project, which is a, a project uh, of creating a station which, again, make, would like to make people feel as if they are at home with colorful plays, light around, and, uh, and a kind of happy feeling that is uh, provoked by this new public building. Also, very fast, we are going to design a new station in Naples, in a place which is very tough. You know, it's uh, also, we are specialized in uh, difficult places and uh, it's very nice you know, to think that we can do something which will make the place uh, be more loving, be more friendly, be more home. And, uh, and uh, here in this, uh, downtown very tough downtown which also never was accepted by people we are doing this new subway station which is uh, very much talking about nature bringing the wood inside the 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 glass and uh, and uh, iron city and make the inside of the station like a covered plaza which is uh, like a forest in a way it will be very soon looking like uh, a, a, a very natural forest. So there is this contrast between uh, the city, uh, very tough, and the new building, which will be more lovable, more natural, uh, a wooden building. And also, I think it's very nice to, to have this look at the cities. No? Whenever you go around, you see the culture. And here we have this beautiful culture of Pompeias and this uh, uh, Hellenistic Roman statues, which uh, are beautiful. And beauty is also still something which is connecting humanity, not only geographically, but also historically. We look at these uh, statues of uh, more than 2000 years ago, and they are alive. So I think this is also kind of an incredible lesson for, for us. So to finish, I think I would like to maybe, maybe we can talk about a project which is, uh, well, we have a beautiful station, a beautiful church, but I think uh, I showed you the church only, only like, uh, like an inside. It's also about reusing pieces, about a lot of wood, but much more, you know, the insertion of art. And uh, this is uh, more than feeling at home, let's say. You know, it's, uh, it's uh, making a space which makes you feel connected with uh, something even, even bigger, you know, something uh, which you can call God, the saints, uh, your relationship with... Uh, with a more uh, mystical part of yourself. So I think this uh, was more than designing a home. No, it was uh, very, very important. And it was uh, a very special project. But we leave the church and maybe we go to the last project I would like to talk to you about. And this project, uh, we start historically. No, we start historically, it's in Barcelona. So it, it's easy for you to remember, but Barcelona is the place where we live. And uh, that in the distance is Sagrada Familia. This was 1910, so more than 100 years ago. This was countryside. And in this countryside, they decided to build a very special hospital, which, uh, which is a crazy hospital. It doesn't look like a hospital. It looks like a castle. It's so beautiful. But this man here, he was very rich, you know, he was called Pau Gil, and uh, nobody remembers him now, but we remember him because of this hospital that he financed. But he didn't only finance the hospital. He also said, 
I want this hospital to be the most beautiful place because this hospital is dedicated to poor people. And I would like the poor people to enter here and to forget about their illness and to think this is like heaven. I feel here more than at home. So this is, again, this simple concept of feeling at home. And uh, there is a lady, which you see here, her name was Maggie Keswick. And here is her husband, who was Charles Jenks. And Maggie, Maggie decided uh, while she was suffering cancer that hospitals were not places where you can feel at home. They were places where you feel anonymous, where you feel um, of nobody, where you lose your identity. And so she started to have a fantastic, simple idea to make places near hospitals where you can feel at home. And uh, she had many friends like um, that you might know, Frank Gehry, Zaha Hadid, uh, OMA, Page and Park, uh, and uh, um, uh, uh, Rogers. And they all accepted to give as a present a project for uh, this new homes next to hospitals. This is Foster, who is uh, also introducing the possibility to cultivate uh, the meadow while you're there. So this is a, a fantastic, simple idea. Hospitals are in fact inhospitable places, are in fact places where you don't feel at home. So let's make a little home next to the hospital where people who suffer cancer can go and can feel simply at home. They can also cry there, they can have uh, um, yoga lessons or they can have therapies, but the main idea is that they feel at home and they can make a cup of tea. So we were designing in this hospital, Sao Paulo Hospital by Domenech Montaner in uh, Barcelona, a new center like this one. Of course, the modernistic architecture was our inspiration and it's about making flowers. You know, the Gaudi, Domenech Montaner, they were simply trying to make uh, a flower architecture, you know, because nature is something that is really connecting us. So they were giving this and we were trying to do the same in this little place here. You see, this is, the old hospital, this is the new one. And this is the little center which we are designing, we design here. And it's of course a little house, a little home and it's garden. And uh, this is kind of making you uh, uh, forget about the hospital which is here and open towards the garden and towards the modernistic center which is a still a very beautiful uh, scenery and uh, not an inhospitable garden. So we go quite fast. This is under construction. And these are pieces of the, uh, how we reacted to the modernistic construction. We were very simple, only one color, but we were trying to introduce this lightness that it's uh, very typical of the uh, modernistic architecture and the connection with the garden. So from the hospital, you have this attractive little house, which uh, has an open door. You enter from the door and you enter in a new world uh, with a garden, with a pergola, which covers you, uh, where your illness is no longer a real uh, 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 not individual problem is uh, you can be yourself and you can talk about it with someone else who is may maybe there. Find your place inside the little house which is dedicated to make you feel at home and uh, uh, open the doors towards the garden, relax on the furniture or do nothing at all. And uh, this is uh, the function of this place to really make you feel at home. 
So now the garden is totally fantastic. And uh, we are going every year. Uh, tonight I'm going there to celebrate and try to, to have more fundraising so that many more of these places can be built around here in Catalonia and Spain. So thank you very much. I think I talk too much, but thank you very much to listen. And I'm open to questions if you want. Well, thank you very much to you. And uh, I'm, delighted, I'm delighted by all the presentation in detail of uh, what you have done in uh, uh, relatively uh, short period of time. Uh, something that uh, probably uh, is interesting to see is uh, exactly that particular relation between uh, the scales. So what we see in uh, all your projects uh, is uh, a very incredible continuity uh, that uh, the design in a way uh, covers uh, between uh, so the, the, the molecular dimension of uh, the tectonic uh, of uh, in the case of the waving uh, for Shanghai or for other other works. I'm thinking, for instance, uh, of that project. I think uh, four, a couple four years back in Ven in Venice, which was this sort of uh, what is a uh, really feeling at home, and that's a really feeling at home because after you walk for an entire day, then you find a place where you can <laughs> lay on, <laughs> on soft <laughs> materials, uh, enjoying <laughs> the view of colors. <laughs> Is really yeah, but I, I always get very tired when I when I go to these big events. And so I, I try when I can uh, make a, an intervention to give benches, to give cushions, uh, to give places for people to rest. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, uh, I, and I would say it's interesting because at the same time, it's not just a question of scale in terms of, uh, you know, from the, the molecular to the molar, so to say, but... Uh, also in terms of time, and uh, this is a particular interest in capturing uh, at the same time uh, short events uh, to test uh, particular ideas or particular techniques, uh, like for instance, the Biennale or also the Expo, but at the same time uh, uh, onto long-standing projects uh, that uh, the one you said, for instance, or the public spaces uh, in Rimini or other places uh, that require much longer processes and much more, in, in, much more interest in uh, engaging with different you know, transition stakeholders, uh, policies, and of course, uh, uh, difficulties that uh, arise when uh, projects are done. So that's a very interesting uh, aspect because when you talk about the question of establishing relation and relationality, so to understand how things uh, are particularly capable of being captured in embedded systems as opposed to be transplanted and understanding how these uh, operation that can, can happen, like in the case of Shanghai, uh, by intercepting uh, possible, con possible, possible continuity between differences, uh, between differences of uh, uh, whatever it is, uh, languages, differences of expression, differences uh, of uh, paradigms uh, uh, that uh, create these things. Uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, similarities uh, that uh, uh, we were saying before uh, allow us uh, to really establish uh, immediate connectivity, immediate relation, immediate uh, uh, relationality with all elements, with particular elements that become central uh, to a project. Uh, so that's something that uh, uh, I would like to, to hear more. I, uh, of course, it's getting late now, but uh, that also has to do with your interest for the smallest scale. For instance, you were talking about wood, and of course, uh, New Zealand is uh, the one of the most uh, uh, important exporters of wood since probably the colonial time. And I think that logs are probably the third item for export, export in New Zealand after dairy products like milk and probably meat. So <laughs> we are very interested in that particular aspect of how, uh, not only because of a, a question of sustainability, but also a question of understanding some specificities and capabilities that are associated to materials and to particular practices of uh, you know, embedding them in regulation and in uh, materialities uh, uh, that uh, are at the basis of the industry in this case of construction. And how you're able, uh, uh, there would be in another area of discussion, but maybe for, an, for a following a follow up of this, of this presentation on the smaller scale uh, of the details. So I know that you engaged a lot with wood also in the design of objects uh, like chairs, uh, tables, objects in, in themselves. 
and uh, in some cases, uh, unique pieces like the church. Yeah. So is there anything you would like to tell us about this small scale of your, uh, I can say, engagement with materials? I, I think I always say that, I said in this uh, lecture that the small scale is very useful when you do projects of long term, which are very kind of, you get bored uh, to, to, to energize, no? And also to experiment and to, and to have uh, this kind of tests, as you were saying. So, uh, for example, we, we like to do uh, small things or exhibitions um, or pavilions many times. And I think through that, we are learning a lot. For example, this uh, learning with, uh, with uh, the idea of, uh, of wood as a very sustainable material, we probably learned uh, through small pavilions that we were doing. And, and now we are applying more and more in our big buildings, like uh, for example, the station in Naples or the Santa Caterina market and most of the of the new architecture that we are doing. So I think it's it's really very, very nice to have this uh, double scale in the office. And now we are also kind of uh, uh, proposing some uh, pieces of furniture, some lamps, some uh, little things, because I think it's really, it's really kind of a complementary. And, uh, and it's true, you no, know, that when you have this, uh, desire to design a better environment mm, at big scale, you also have the same desire for the small one. So I think it's nice and natural to accept that. And if you want, if you say that wood is a, such a fantastic uh, product of New Zealand, uh, you know, we were, uh, we were participating to competitions called uh, Hello Wood, where you uh, create a wood pavilion, and we are now inventing with the wood uh, uh, university, the wood uh, section in the university, um, other activities. We could invent something, and uh, which would be fantastic. <laughs> Spectacular! Thanks a lot. I, I think we have covered also the questions that we have in the chat, uh, and uh, one of them is about uh, again home uh, from a student that uh, refers to the question of. Uh, the home in the public space. Uh, it would be interesting uh, to explore as well. Uh, I'm thinking, for instance, of the question of the home and the market. Uh, and again, the Biennale, the last Biennale, in which uh, uh, the, 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 the design of a home, the design of, uh, I think, if I can't, re if I don't get, I'm not mistaken, was uh, the social housing, uh, uh, the building for social housing uh, it, it enters in the space of the street, bringing that porosity into the public space. So, and, uh, yeah, I think that uh, we covered that. Uh, uh, so I think that for now, I guess we have uh, uh, also, uh, we went also over time uh, and we can leave it there. And uh, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, Actually, uh, thank you very much. I Manfredo? hope we will be able to see you so, oh, so again. Yeah, sorry, we've got um, two questions. Can you have a look at the Q&A? Yeah, 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 but I was saying that we covered the question in the discussion. Okay. Uh, I guess that uh, uh, mm, unless there's a, meaning there's a last question, which is uh, about home and the design process. That could be one that possibly before leaving, uh, if you have five minutes, uh, we might want to address. Uh, the colleague of ours here at the university, very much interested in, uh, in uh, professional practice uh, and uh, 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 design process and how the design process is developed uh, through, uh, well, from conception to delivery. Well, I, I think the design process, you have seen a little bit of the studio and it's very important, I think, to see the studio because it's a, it's a studio full of young people. And uh, um, I, I feel like a mommy in a way to everybody. In a way, I, I, I think I am the same age of the people I see around me. So this is a big help. But, uh, <laughs> but it's very lovely to have this uh, um, uh, process of... Uh, uh, inventing or doing new new projects always through many different uh, aspects no through maybe uh, models that we are doing and uh, maybe we choose some um, ways of doing which were not thought at the beginning so this hand production by different people 
is very useful to arrive to have new ideas, no? to have uh, uh, something that you didn't have in mind before. And, uh, and then we are trying our best to develop these uh, first ideas in a way where you don't lose the idea. And this is uh, something that I learned next to Eric Miralles. He was always saying that a project is alive. So you don't have to let him die. And uh, uh, you let the project die if you don't feed it. And the feeding is looking after, you know? So you, you never have to let it abandon and say, okay, this is just developing. If you do that, then very possible your project or the main ideas of your project will die. So you, you have to think that you have to feed it all the time. And this is what we are trying. It's very, it's very challenging because, for example, when you are doing something for China, as I was showing you, of course, it's, uh, this uh, project of feeding was going, let's say, from one hand to another one. And we couldn't be uh, on top. No, COVID also made a, a big separation. And, uh, and this is, uh, OK, this is another way of considering that we have to develop architecture maybe with other means. But when we can choose, we do exactly as in the last project I showed you, which was in Barcelona, this Calida project from the Magis centers. And uh, this, uh, this was really from the beginning to the end, we were there constantly. So you can choose everything, all the details, the furniture, uh, the um, uh, colors of, uh, um, of what goes between the bricks, uh, and, and so on. And this is very important respect to the, to the process and to the result you would like to have. I don't know if I answered. I think so. Fantastic. So thanks again, uh, Benedetta. Thanks for your time. And I hope uh, we will have the chance in the future to uh, work together again or to have you here, maybe in person, or if not that one, uh, virtual again. Thanks a lot. Uh, and have a good night. <laughs> Thank you to everybody. Ciao, bye -bye, bye -bye. Ciao everybody. Bye -bye. Thank you so much. Bye bye.